housing prices might go up, but the value in your home will go down forever. Let's jump into it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Future Proof Show with Adam O'Brien. I'm Adam O'Brien. Holy smokes, what is going on with real estate? Let's see what the always correct internet has to say about it. As the housing market continues to stagnate, we keep seeing more and more of these investments go upside down. Somebody bought this property back in September of 2023 for $650,000. A third of an acre, 650K. I do not see any mountains or any ocean. I see nothing. In fact, I see, if we zoom in here, I see a traffic circle. <laughs> Oh, that's a lot of money. Which is absolutely insane because there's literally just a garage on the property and there's not even a way to access it. it. Used to be a driveway right here. There's now a sidewalk and the old driveway right there you can't even get to. So within a month or two later, they got it back on the market. Tiny little garage listing it for 650000 which is what they bought it for. That's actually a really interesting point that he has here. This is a little bit off the top of the video, but there used to be a driveway and now there's a sidewalk. That truly highlights, I think that right there, that little simple sentence, it might seem pretty innocent. This is absolutely the problem with owning real estate is that you are exposed to the decisions of the government or the neighbors in that area, which could make your house less desirable. Obviously that's not a big deal, but there used to be a driveway. Now there's a sidewalk implying they're going to have to build a driveway if they want a driveway. How many of you would buy a house with no driveway? To be going from bad to worse in Canada's troubled housing industry. New figures out tonight show last month was the slowest month for house construction in 13 years. Okay, that's as rates have gone up. As rates have gone up, that is exactly what's happening. See, my parents bought my childhood home for $150,000 in 1997. I was five years old when we moved into that house. So mid nineties, let's say, they bought it for 150K. Interest rate, 12.5% on that $150,000 home. So do some quick math. Over the course of a quarter century, which is the average length of a mortgage term, how much does the house cost? Well, it costs about, let's call it 400 grand. Let's do some really quick head math. Today, in 2024, they could sell that house for probably like 500 grand. The money that they paid for the house, all in, the, the entire house that they bought is about 450K. And they could now sell it for 500. So granted, they had a place to live, but they also paid property taxes. They had to put a new furnace in. They've completely renovated the house. I don't see how those numbers pay off. So as rates mm. came down, the value in the home is transferred to the property owner. That's good, it's a balance sheet. But what happens as rates go up? The opposite and the value starts to go back to the bank. That's what we're seeing here. It would be hard to imagine better conditions for buying a home. Prices in most parts of Canada have been falling steadily since the late 1980s. There are plenty of homes from which to choose and mortgages are cheap. Whoa, that's interesting. And I don't think he's wrong. I think that might be a little bit of an edge case, but he raises a good point that renting is the better option. Not to mention $830,000 house. You got to put $83,000 down as a 10% down payment. You have to sell like two Bitcoin to buy that house. That's ludicrous. That's in today's dollars. And I'm not sure when that was. If it's 2023, you have to sell like four Bitcoin to, just to buy that house, just for the privilege of having debt. Owning real estate is way worse than owning Bitcoin and renting a house. We have somehow in society, we've coupled up success with home ownership. I think the most successful people are those that are renting with a fat Bitcoin wallet. Now, lastly, back to our boys on the TikTok investors Twitter. It's one Airbnb to retire. So I pay $700 a night for this Airbnb. As you can see, this is just an average setup. It's not anything fancy, but it's the location. If you take 700 times 30 days, that's $21,000 a month. What do you do in February, bro? You're missing two days. You're missing 1400 bucks. What happens if like, you know, a guest doesn't come? There's no way this guy's operating at 100%. This house probably goes for between 700 to $750,000. 
So when you go get a loan with the bank to buy a second home, don't tell them that it's going to be a rental because if you tell them it's a rental, you have to put 20 to 25% down. So what you do is you tell them that this is your secondary vacation house. So you only require to put 10% down. How laughable is it that legacy finance just puts different requirements <laughs> onto different things? Like the home is the same home. If you were truly, if this asset was truly good enough to be backed by the loan that they're giving you or to, for the loan to be backed by the house that, that you're buying, they shouldn't care if it's used for a vacation home or for a rental. The asset should just be enough to actually back the loan. It doesn't matter. When you go to get a loan for Bitcoin, for example, they don't ask you, well, what is this Bitcoin going to be used for? Well, when did you buy this Bitcoin? What price did you buy this Bitcoin for? They don't care because the asset Bitcoin is so real. It is so tangible, so fungible, so good acting as sound money, as a real asset that you don't care because I've got the Bitcoin. I'll give you the money. It doesn't matter. The average income in America is around $54,000 a year. And just by renting this house out for three months out of the year, you make $63,000. Oh man, that math is so bad. I actually booked an Airbnb the other day. If you're gonna be, speaking of, if you're gonna be in Montreal in May, you should definitely come to the Canadian Bitcoin conference. I'm going to be there. The whole Bitcoin well team is going to be there. We booked an Airbnb in Montreal. Now, we booked it for like some exuberant price per night. Then we paid a cleaning fee. Then we paid an Airbnb fee. Then we paid tax. By the way, tax in Quebec is messed up. So there's no chance Airbnb is doing all this to the consumer and none of it to the provider, to the person renting their home out. So right off the bat, that $63,000 a month, not true. Also, like I said off the top, there's no way you're operating at 100% efficiency. Not to mention, you just bought yourself a job. And all that, you're still exposed to whatever neighborhood this is, whatever homeowners association, or it looks like a house, not a condo board, that you're exposed to them saying, you know what? No more short-term rentals. This Airbnb market is absolutely going to crater. I just don't understand how we as a society got so hungry and so capable and so willing to put all of the value that we create with our time into a house, into a literal asset that you need to put money into to maintain. Not to mention, as the money gets worse and worse and worse, which is just verifiable. Don't tell me that your money's not inflating. Your money's inflating. As your money inflates and your money gets worse, the products used to build your house, to build the appliances, to build the products in your house are getting worse, which makes the maintenance more expensive and more frequent. It is crazy how much micro liability we have and we think we've been tricked, we've been fooled into thinking that this is an actual asset. It's not, it's a liability, not to mention, all the exposure that you have to the decisions of the municipal, provincial, and federal government where you own the house, fine. Let's say we accept it. The government does everything that they can do to actually preserve your house and make sure that you've got the best living experience. But we can already start to see this narrative creep in where only rich people have homes. Only rich people have savings now, but only rich people are going to have homes soon. It's only going to be a luxury for the rich. And as we all know, the rich are bad people. We have to eat the rich and make the rich taxed unconditionally. We need, to, we need to tax the rich on their unrealized gains. Oh my goodness. If we start taxing people on the unrealized value of their house, the housing market is going to crater. You are exposed to so many different things that the government can do all in the name of collective protection. It is absolutely not a real estate. <laughs> you might have your name on a piece of paper at the land titles office down the street, but all that is good for is the walls and the roof and the liability of that building. You don't own the land underneath it. You can't pick that house up and take it with you to a new spot. The only asset, truly the only asset that you can actually own is Bitcoin. You have the ability to store your time in an asset that is actually programmed, verifiably programmed, a protocol like gravity to protect the value that you create with your time. If I had to choose going back to the first house that I bought in 2013, if I had to choose between owning a home and buying Bitcoin, there's no question buying Bitcoin is the better play. Thanks so much for watching. If you wanna see more content like this, make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to stay sovereign.